The following action of the 2015 Tour Natal Rally is brought to you by Motorsport South Africa and its partners Toyota, Ford, Volkswagen, Sassol and Dunlop. For the crews taking part in the 2015 South African National Rally Championship, round one was the dawn of a new day. New opportunities, new machines and above all, new hope. As has become the custom over the last number of years, the 2015 season kicked off in KwaZulu Natal with a Tour Natal Rally hosted by the Natal Motorcycle and Car Club. This is undeniably one of South Africa's toughest rallies, thanks not only to its position at the start of the season, but even more so due to the extremely fast and super slippery sugarcane roads that mark the area around the south coast town of Scottborough, where the rally was again based. The challenges of the terrain are many, including the so-called marbles or tiny stones that form a top layer of slipperiness over the hardest surface below. The tall sugarcane also makes it difficult for drivers to look ahead into corners, forcing them to rely much more on the notes called out by their navigators. This year has seen the introduction of a two-pass recce before the event, allowing crews to write their own detailed route notes. But making rally notes is a fine art, and the less experienced crews were sure to be at a disadvantage on the Tour Natal. Then again, if rallying was easy, it wouldn't have been the spectacular sport we've come to love and enjoy. So the crews simply had to suck it up, do the recce and make the best possible notes for the rally. Talking of crews, the South African National Rally Championship sports four classes for the 2015 season. At the top of the pile is still the spectacular four-wheel drive normally aspirated two-litre monsters known as Class S2000. A smaller subclass featuring similar machines but with slightly older technology is now known as Class NRC4. There is also Class NRC2, where historic rally machines take part, usually to great cheers from the spectators. And finally, there is the reason you're watching this show, namely Class S1600, South Africa's premier rally class for front-wheel drive machines with engines no larger than 1600cc. But before we delve into the action of Class S1600, let's take a quick look at how things played out in Class S2000. The Battle of the Tour Natal Rally started even before the lights at the start of Stage 1 turned green. The reason for this was the traditional numbers draw, where the top crews in Class S2000 draw numbers to determine the starting order of the rally. Drawing number one on Tour Natal with its slippery coat of marbles on the stages means a severe penalty. Whomever goes first will have to sweep the surface of its loose stones and hemorrhage time in the process. As it happened, it was defending champions Leroy Poulter and navigator Elvin Kutsia who drew the number one spot. And the moment the flag dropped for the start of the rally, it was clear that they were in trouble. The pair launched their newly liveried Castrol team Toyota Yaris into stage one, but found it impossible to fully commit on the slippery surface. And as a result, they lost time hand over fist on the first three stages. By this point, the stages were repeated for the second loop, negating the need for sweeping and thus allowing the champions to compete on an even footing. But by then, the damage was done. Former champions Mark Cornier and navigator Robin Halson clearly had the bit between their teeth from the get-go. The Ford crew barely made it past the first turn of the season last year. But this year, they stamped their authority on the Tour Natal right from the start. From second on the road, they still had to contend with much the same marbles as Poulter. The Ford pairing attacked from the moment Cornier dropped the clutch at the start of the stage. Volkswagen's Hans Weiss and Bjorn de Gant got off to a good start too, posting the fourth fastest time on the opening stage just behind their teammates Henk Latefan and Barry White, also in a Sassol-sponsored Volkswagen. 
Behind them came Castrol Team Toyota's new pairing in the form of Dakar veteran Janelle de Villiers and navigator Carolyn Swan. And that was pretty much the order throughout the two days of the event. Pony and Houghton led from start to finish, clearly showing their class. Bolt did it well to mitigate his early hesitance by finishing just 44 seconds behind Cronier, ensuring that Cronier didn't steal an early march on the championship. Lauterkhan and White completed the podium, but it was Castrol Toyota's De Villiers and Swan who ended in fourth place after a roll on stage four took Weiss and De Gunt out of the running. But that was Class S 2000's story. For the crews in Class S 1600, the Tour Natal Rally held different challenges. And if there's one man who clearly had a grip on the situation even before the start, it was defending champion and Yata Toyota Etios driver Guy Bottrell. I think we've done quite a lot of testing, uh, quite a lot of prep. The car is hopefully more reliable this year so we don't have any drive shaft failures like we had last year. Uh, the pace was certainly there so we just got to maintain and uh, make sure we're at the sharp end of the field all the time. But Bottrell wasn't the only competitor who had an eye on the 2015 championship. Runner-up in 2014 was Polis Franken with navigator Henry Kern beside him in the Manitou Volkswagen Polo. The pair ended the year with a flourish but scored poorly at the start of the season. The pair were hopeful that 2015 would be kinder. Yeah, last year we finished our season strong, but we had a difficult start to the season, so definitely we're just going to focus on scoring points for this event. The surprise of the 2014 season was undoubtedly Andrew Hein and Robbie Kutzier in the Heinz Ford Volkswagen Polo. Not only did the pair post very fast stage times, they did so consistently through most of the season. This paid off when they were locked in a final round battle for second place in the championship with Franken and Kern. But Hein lost out right at the end and had to settle for third. Now the crew was getting ready to face the new year, starting with a Tour Natal rally. I think last year was a good year for us. We had no real expectation of anything and we ended up uh, third on the, on the championship. So this year we're hoping to build on that experience and, and go on better, you know. And then there was 2014's championship hopeful Chad van Buurden, who piloted his James Sport Volkswagen Polo to many first stage times, but got let down by the reliability of his steed. The former track racer will be hoping for better things to come this year. It's looking good for us. We put in a lot of preparation and um, feeling comfortable with the car and the car feels strong. And those are just some of the key players in the class. Other noteworthy competitors include young Matthew Vasey Lyle and navigator Skull van Heerden in the Fragrum Toyota Etios, as well as Richard Leek and navigator Rikus Furi in the ATS Ford Fiesta. Both these crews have shown that they are fast enough to win stages, but have yet to string them all together. One crew who's won in the past is that of Ashley Haig Smith and navigator Damien van Aas. The pair showed considerable pace during 2014, but also lacked the consistency needed to win events. Also worth mentioning was a new entry for 2015 in the form of veteran driver Nico Higgs and equally veteran navigator Etienne Lorenz. The pair had plotted a return to rallying late last year, and the Tour Natal Rally of 2015 was to be the scene of their first foray as a team. But enough about the players, let's take a look at how their game played out. It all started with a stage known as Invernetti, a 13 kilometer long series of twists and turns, some 40 minutes drive inland from Scotra. Remember that defending champion Guy Bottrell started the season with a win on this, his home event. So the expectations were high for a repeat of that feat and Bottrell didn't disappoint. He posted the quickest time at 8 minutes 33.4, taking seven seconds from the next quickest crew as a little, how do you do? Yeah, our car felt good, uh, notes were good, um, I was happy with that. And that crew was none other than Chad van Buurden and Nico Swartz in the Gemsport Volkswagen Polo. Yeah, we were happy, we were comfortable, I think we could have pushed it a bit harder. But they were quick, yes, but they had young free stater Ernie van der Waal behind them. It feels good, the car feels good, um, the old package, my new sponsors. Ashley Haig Smith and navigator Damien van Us in the AHS Ford Fiesta were just 2.4 seconds slower than Van der Waal, but they had a 10 second buffer over Andrew Hein and Robbie Kutzier in the Heinz Ford Volkswagen Polo. The off season works uh, paid off, so I'm happy uh, so far the time looks alright. 
Matthew Vasey Lyle and Scott van Heerden in the Fragrum Toyota Etios were only 0.6 of a second slower, with Franken and Kern behind them. We're the first 600 on the road, so um, yeah, the lines are a bit difficult to read. Next up, Richard Leake in the ATS Ford Fiesta. Ah, better than I expected. Just we had some problems with our intercom. I can't really hear it because it's all fuzzy. So. He was followed by young AC Potgitter and navigator Tommy de Toy in the Volkswagen Polo. The established gentleman in the HRD Volkswagen Polo followed, but Nico Higgs and Etienne Lorenz were nearly two minutes off the pace set by Bottrell. Next up was stage two, known as Drum Durok. At just 8.86 kilometers long, it may not have been the longest stage on the event, quite the opposite in fact, but it is well known as a take no prisoners stage with ample opportunity for things to go wrong. Not that anything went wrong for the flying Bottrell and Vasey Lyle, the pair went quickest again and took another 11 seconds from Van Bierden and Swartz in the process. Andrew Hein and Robbie Kutsia posted the third quickest time on this stage, some 17 seconds slower than Bottrell. AC Potgitter and Tommy de Toy came through next fastest, just 0.1 of a second slower than Hein. Richard Leek had also clearly found some rhythm as he posted a time just two seconds slower than Potgitter. He was followed through by Basie Lyle, Franken, Hague Smith, Van Avolt, and Higgs. The final stage in the first loop for the day was stage three, known as Esperanza. This 13.7 kilometer long stage is an old favorite with spectators and offers some spectacular sugarcane lined roads that traverse a breathtaking valley. The Bottrell, a win on this stage would make it a hat trick of stage wins. This time of 10 minutes and 48 seconds was pretty good. Unfortunately for the young Durbanite, it wasn't quite fast enough to beat Van Bierden who had decided it was time to turn up the wick. His time of 10 minutes 46.9 was 1.1 seconds quicker than that of Bottrell. Not enough to make a real impact, but even so. Ernie van der Walt had also found some extra pace on this stage, posting the third quickest time, albeit nine seconds slower than the time posted by Bottrell. Richard Leake was again quick, bringing the ATS Ford Fiesta through in the fourth fastest time, just five seconds slower than Van Avolt. Ashley Haig-Smith in a similar Ford Fiesta was next quickest with Matthew Basie Lyle in the fragrant Toyota behind him. Andrew Hein was going strong, and he was followed through the stage by Paul Franken and AC Potgitter, with Nico Higgs in car number 100 still hanging on. With the first three stages of the rally complete, it was time for the crews to return to the Dunlop Service Park for some much needed rest and repairs, before tackling the same three stages again in the afternoon. This is also the ideal moment to take a look at who was where in the standings at this point. So after three stages, it was defending champions Guy Bottrell and Simon Vasey Lyon who topped the standings. They had an 18 second lead over Chad van Buren and Nico Swartz, with Ashley Haig-Smith and Damien van Us a further 17 seconds back. Richard Leek and Rikus Furi were in fourth, while Matthew Basie Lyle and Skalk van Heerden completed the top five. A second run through each of the three morning stages followed, starting with Inveneti, now stage four of the Tour Natal rally. In the morning session, it was defending champion Guy Bottrell who went quickest and he posted a time of 8 minutes 33.4 seconds. This time, he went even faster with a time of 8.29.1, again setting the pace on the stage. Things were looking solid for the young Durbanite. Behind him came Chad van Bierden, some 3 seconds slower, with Ashley Haig-Smith some 5 seconds behind that. So the top three in the standings posting the top three stage times too. True to pattern, it was only Van Avolt who came through fourth quickest, losing just two seconds to Haig Smith on the stage. But then the order changed somewhat. Instead of Richard Leek and the ATS Ford coming through next as expected, it was AC Potgitter who posted the fifth fastest time. Paul Franken and Henry Kern was next quickest and they were followed by Lacey Lyle, Richard Leek and Andrew Hine. Nico Higgs was still going strong, though he continued to lose time to the rest of the field. Up 
next was stage five, which consisted of a second run through the section known as Drum Durrock, 8.65 kilometers in length, the short tester could have a significant impact. But this time, the only significant blow to the field came when AC Potkiter and Tommy de Toy ran wide in their Volkswagen Polo. The pair ended up beached and lost around four minutes trying to extricate their stricken steed. The rest of the field had a clean run through the stage, with Bottrell again posting the quickest time at 6 minutes 36.2 seconds. This was exactly 3 seconds quicker than Chad van Buurden and 11 seconds quicker than the third fastest man, Ashley Haig Smith. Richard Leake was still posting competitive stage times with Ernie van der Walt matching his fellow Ford driver blow for blow. Paul Franken, Andrew Hine and Matthew Basie Lyle all posted times under seven minutes. By the time stage six came around, which was really a rerun of Esperanza, it was clear that Bottrell was very much in command of the rally. His lead over Van Buren before starting stage six was just short of a minute, and the Yato Toyota Etios crew was looking good. He posted a time of 10 minutes 36.5 on the stage, yet another good stage time despite losing four minutes due to a puncture. But this time, it wasn't quite good enough for another stage win, as former track racer Chad van Buren in the James Ford Volkswagen Polo threw down the gauntlet by going 3.5 seconds quicker than Bottrell. The Pretoria-based driver was clearly on a mission. Richard Leake in the ATS Ford Fiesta went third fastest on the stage, though he lost 15 seconds to the two leaders despite his fast time. Behind him, it was Paul Franken in the Manitou Volkswagen Polo and Andrew Hein in the Heinz Sport version of the same machine. Matthew Basie Lyle in the Fragram Toyota Etios lost some time on the stage, while the engine in the Volkswagen Polo of Nico Higgs and Etienne Lorenz gave up the ghost, bringing their first rally together to a rather disappointing end. But the biggest casualty on stage six was surely Ernie van der Bolt and navigator Rowan Robertson who put their Victor Ford Fiesta on its roof, ending the youngsters' charge in its tracks. With the day stages behind them, it was time for the crews to return to the Dunlop Service Park in Scottborough. We caught up with a man who had led for most of the rally so far, Guy Bottrell, at the end of day one. I'm happy, uh, but we're under a bit of pressure now. We stripped some uh, engine mounting bolts in the gearbox, so uh, the guys are quickly trying to change it, but uh, they're trying to put heli coils in, which is uh, never the best thing, but uh, that's all we can do at the moment, and we're running out of time. As the sun set over the south coast, it was the name of Chad van Buurden that topped the standings. After Bottrell dropped down the order thanks to his gearbox problems, Ashley Haig Smith was up into second place, with Richard Leake third at the rally midpoint. Paul Franken had moved into fourth, while Bottrell was left nearly four minutes adrift of the leader, having to mount a fight back from fifth. For day two of the Tour Natal Rally, round one of the South African National Rally Championship for 2015, the stages were much closer to the coast. First up was the 18.9 kilometer long Montevideo, which was run three times on the final day. By now it was clear that Bottrell would have to dig deep if he wanted to salvage anything after his disastrous final stage on day one. But it wasn't to be. The defending champion suffered brake problems on Montevideo and recorded a time of 19 minutes 51.9, more than four minutes down on the eventual stage winner. That stage winner was Ashley Haig Smith in the AHS Ford Fiesta. His time of 15 minutes 22.3 was 1.7 seconds quicker than that of young AC Potgieter in a Volkswagen Polo, who was taking part under Super Rally regulations after not completing day one. Ernie van der Malt, also competing under Super Rally regs, posted the third quickest time, with Andrew Hein just 1.2 seconds behind him. Matthew Basie Lyle followed, with Paul Franken behind him. Two names were, however, clearly missing from the stage results, Chad van Buurden and Richard Leake. The Volkswagen and Ford crews suffered a similar fate when they went slightly wide after a blind press, landing hard on the side of the track. It was game over for both crews, bringing an end to what was shaping up to be great performances by both. 
Tour Natal rally swept on regardless of the casualties left by Montevideo and continued on to stage 8 named Ellingham. This 25.3 kilometer long stage can only be described as a monster and has been the scene of many upsets over the years. For Guy Bottrell, however, it was the scene of a return to form rather than an upset. The young Durbanite set the quickest stage time yet again after sorting out his brake problems. His time was 20 minutes, 2.1 seconds. That's some 42 seconds faster than the time posted by Paul Franken, who went second quickest on the stage. Matthew Basie Lyle, however, matched Franken's time to the second, but that was really the last of the highlights. Rally leader Ashley Haig Smith had gearbox mount problems, which made gear selection difficult. He posted a time one minute ten slower than Bottrell. But he still had a comfortable lead, so no reason to panic yet. But there were some chinks showing. Stage 8 also saw the demise of Andrew Hine and Robbie Kutsier in the Hein Sport Volkswagen Polo. The pair ran wide on a turn and ended up beached in soft sand. Unable to extricate their rally machine, they were forced to retire. Next came a short visit to the Dunlop Service Park, which was clearly much needed by this point. So after eight stages, it was still the name of Ashley Haig Smith who topped the standings. He was the best part of a minute ahead of Franken, with Basie Lyle now up to third. Bottrell was hanging on to fourth, with Andrew Hine, despite not finishing the previous stage, in fifth. With the stages unwinding, it was time for a second run through Montevideo this time as stage nine of the rally. With Haig Smith possibly in trouble and not all that much time separating them, it was Paul Franken and Henry Kern who pushed the hardest on the stage, posting a time of 15 minutes, 16.6. Not shabby at all. But then the rally leaders, Haig Smith and Van Us, were having problems with their gear selection and lost more ground when they posted a time 16 seconds slower than Franken. Not quite enough to lose the lead of the rally, but reason for concern nonetheless. Matthew Basie Lyon and Scott van Geerden, the third quickest on the stage, followed by Guy Bottrell and Simon Basie Lyle, who were doing their best to salvage something from round one of the championship. Stage 10 then came next and was comprised of a second run through the 25 kilometer long Ellingham, a tough stage to put it mildly. Paul Franken, it was another opportunity to take time out of the stricken Haig Smith and he posted a time of 20 minutes 13.3, that's nearly 30 seconds quicker than the Ford Fiesta driver. But Franken was still seven seconds behind with one stage to go. It was getting tight at the top. Behind Franken, Bottrell posted the second quickest time on the stage, but he was more than two minutes 30 behind the car in front of him, so taking 11 seconds out of Matthew Basie Lyle, as he did, was just not enough to have a meaningful influence. With 10 stages done and dusted, it was time for a quick visit to the Dunlop Service Park before tackling the final stage. And what a stage it promised to be. With Haig Smith holding a slender lead of 6.8 seconds going into the final 18 kilometers, Franken had been reeling in the stricken Ford, and Matthew Basie Lyle was looking strong in third. Bottrell was pushing hard, but would likely have to settle for fourth place. The final stage of the 2015 Tour Natal Rally was a third charge through Montevideo, but this time the stage had the added attraction of being run as a WRC style power stage. This meant that each fastest crew would be placed on a podium of sorts until a faster crew beat their time and knocked them off. It was a crowd-pleasing affair for which a mass of spectators turned up. For Paul Franken, it was an opportunity to post another stage win as he went quickest of all with a time of 15 minutes 14.6. In the process, he took another 12 seconds from Matthew Basie Lyle in the program Toyota Etios, with Guy Bartrell coming home another 12 seconds back. Bartrell had slotted in behind the class NRC2 Datsun Triple S of Brian and Keith Hine and was caught in the dust of the older machine. The big question, however, was what happened to rally leader Ashley Haig Smith and navigator Damien van Us? The pair had failed to emerge from the stage after their AHS Ford Fiesta gave up the ghost just two kilometers from the finish. In a cruel twist of fate, Haig Smith was denied the win. 
handing the laurels to Franklin and Kern in the process. This meant that Franken picked up the 2015 season where he left off in 2014, with Vasey Lyle taking a well-deserved second place. Defending champion Guy Bottrell clawed his way back into third, while Haig Smith was demoted to fourth. Andrew Hine took the last spot of the top five. And that was that from the Tour Natal Rally. A great win for Franken and Kuhn in the Manitou Volkswagen Polo, making it two wins from two starts. Yeah, we picked up the season where we ended last year, so hopefully we can keep the momentum throughout the season and score consistent good results. Next up is the Sassel Rally, which takes place in the low felt of Mpumalanga on the 17th and 18th of April. We'll see you there as the 2015 South African National Rally Championship continues. All the action from the 2015 Tour Natal Rally season was brought to you by Motorsport South Africa and its partners Toyota, Ford, Volkswagen, Sassel and Dunlop. <laughs>